Hi friends of Snooze, I'm Bengt Wieberg uh, and the one filming is Uwe Hille and we are supporting Snooze in the European Union. Hashtag EU for Snooze. This is a historical moment because we are visiting Dr. Lars Ramström, one of the absolute foremost scientists concerning tobacco harm reduction and snooze in the world. He is also the vice president of uh, Cold Tobacco Studies. Right. So, Dr. Lars, thank you for for this interview in advance. <laughs> Could you tell the viewers some background on yourself? Thank you, Bengt. I started my dealing with <clears throat> tobacco matters in 1965, when I was appointed Secretary General of the Swedish National Smoking and Health Association, an NGO uh, dealing primarily with information, public education about smoking and health. At, while my original academic training is in natural sciences, I had, when taking up this employment, to supplement my training with matters from medical, social, psychological, economical sciences which are all part of the broad field of tobacco science. On the other hand, in the 1960s, uh, there was not so much uh, to find in terms of uh, scientific findings. The main scientific pieces of evidence were the uh, reports from the Royal College of Physicians in London, 1962, and the American Surgeon General's Report, 64. And in the first years of my career, I was not doing very much research, but I entered into collaboration with researchers and learned a lot about research and uh, eventually I took up various research projects myself within the framework of my work at this association. Uh, that meant that I was the first one to establish regular yearly surveys in Sweden of tobacco habits. When did you start with that? That, what year was it? Uh, that was in 1970. 1970. At that time, SNIVS was not very much of an issue. Uh, SNIVS use had been declining for several decades while cigarette smoking had gone up. But exactly at that time, there was a turning point very much driven by the uh, awareness in, in the Swedish population about those uh, British and American reports about uh, health risks of smoking. Do you, do, sorry to interrupt you, but the uh, decrease in snooze in the 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, in the 60s, 70s, do you think it had anything to do with the innovation of the cigarette filter? I think the cigarette filter, could it help uh, increase smoking rates? It may well be so, because at that time uh, people still believed, although we know now falsely, <laughs> that filters were reducing the risks of smoking. Yeah. And uh, that might have uh, um, encouraged uh, the switching from snooze to smoking at that time. So uh, I will let you continue, but uh, how many published scientific studies have you, have you made in your career? <laughs> 
I haven't counted them <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but if you sum up articles in scientific journals, conference presentations, chapters in books, yes, uh, and everything, I, I think we are approaching at least a hundred. All right, <laughs> that's that's a lot. So uh, please carry on, and, and if you could also highlight. Uh, some things in your studies, in your career, that you find especially important? Yes, I think we could uh, uh, make quite a step forward in time uh, towards the continued increase of snooze and continued decrease in smoking as driven by that awareness that I mentioned. Uh, that meant that the annual surveys we did started to uh, look at SNPs as well, which we had done the very first uh -huh. few years. Yes. Uh, to start with, it was a matter of uh, just noticing prevalence of use of various kinds. Uh, but uh, as discussion went on, uh, it was even more urgent than before to try to investigate how the use of snooze interacted with smoking. Mm -hmm. uh, there were many beliefs that the emergence of snooze would lead uh, many young people to start snooze use, making them nicotine dependent, and that that would later on make them start smoking so that smoking rates would eventually so uh, increase as a result. In, of in other words, people, the general uh, uh, opinion was that snooze could be a gateway into smoking. Yeah, that, that was a common belief. And th that uh, made me uh, start such uh, research projects that would uh, cast more light on exactly that very crucial question. Yeah, it's a uh, crucial question. And uh, uh, I started those uh, snips oriented research projects in the uh, 1990s. And they, soon enough, shown quite clear results that in, in fact uh, snooze use was uh, keeping back uh, initiation of smoking. Mm -hmm. uh, I found uh, uh, data showing that the rate of onset of smoking was much lower among those who had started their tobacco career by starting to use snooze. So initial snooze use seemed to be kind of a protection against initiation of smoking. That was a fact emerging from, from those research pieces of mine. Okay, can we, we will come back to, to this very important subject, but um, uh, for, for the newbies, for, for those who doesn't know, how dangerous is snooze compared to smoking, would you say, in your scientific opinion? There is a very, very important difference in health risks. The most modern uh, medical research has actually ended up by saying that snooze does not cause oral cancer, it does not cause cardiovascular disease. The only uh, caveat is that there are some findings that once you have got a myocardial infarction, if you are a snooze user, you may have a slightly higher risk of a fatal outcome, but that has been questioned by some researchers. Mm -hmm. So, in any case, the cardiovascular risks are, are 
close to negligible in the case of SNPs. And speaking of uh, lung cancer, it's quite obvious that there is no risk at all since SNPs doesn't reach the lungs. If and the same do. thing for uh, the airways uh, and the neck. And that means that uh, the uh, chronic obstructive lung disease, which is one of the major uh, smoking related uh, causes of death, has a zero risk for SNPs. If we, I, I draw a, a Behind you, there is a scale from 100%, from 0% to 100% risk for life and serious health problems. Uh, where would you put uh, snooze on, 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 on this scale, in, in your opinion? Somewhere here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um. And I think it's important to notice that uh, the estimated risk point is so much closer to the zero end <coughs> than to the 100% end. There are so many uh, sources of so-called facts that say, okay, uh, SNUS risk is smaller than the risk of smoking, mm -hmm. but there is still a risk. But that kind of wording sounds like that uh, cutoff point being located quite close to the 100% end of the scale. Yes. So I think it's important to notice the uh, exact location of that point. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, if we carry on in, uh, in German and English, British newspaper in media, there has been since uh, this spring a lot of uh, negative words said about snooze, that snooze is poison, snooze is increasing your capacities as an athlete and it uh, should be listed as doping. What is your opinion on, on this uh, type of writing? Does snooze make us superman? Uh, is snooze poison? <laughs> <laughs> If it is a poison or not, that's a matter of dosage. <laughs> <laughs> and the lethal dosage would be rather impossible to reach. Maybe 10 of these at the same time? Okay, but speaking of doping, it's well known that, uh, for example, ice hockey players, many of them, many Swedish ice hockey players, are heavy news users. And um, that does first of all show that uh, snooze use doesn't incapac incapacitate them, uh, whether it is the reason for their uh, progress and success is not so easy to say, no. but of course since they are nicotine dependent, if they didn't take their usual snooze, yeah. They might suffer from withdrawal problems and uh, uh, they would achieve worse. And, so and, and from, they might have been smoking. From stuff. that point of view, uh, you might see some similarity with doping, although I would not put that label. Mm -hmm. no, uh, as, as we know, the, the World Sport Federation uh, uh, has not listed snooze as a, as a doping uh, thing. And I think uh, uh, more than half of the Swedish national football team and the ice hockey team, they use snooze, they don't smoke, which is, uh, of course, a, a good thing. Anything 
that is not smoking is better for the health. Do you agree? Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay. Have, are you a Snoots user? No, I have never been. Never been? Right. We wonder uh, what scientific studies uh, support that snooze is a gateway out of smoking instead of to smoking. I think uh, several yeah, of your studies. I will first of all refer to some of my own studies. Uh, first of all, the one that was published uh, in 2006 and even more the more modern and larger one that was published in 2014. On a s smoking cessation among yes, the yeah, Swedish yeah. population. Uh, what is the strength of um, these studies is that I have done what no other researcher has done, namely asking the respondents which one of the two kinds of tobacco use did you start first? Did you start uh -huh. as new shoes and then go into smoking or the other way? Okay. That the answers on those questions uh, combined with other questions about current and former smoking habits and snooze use habits that makes it possible for me to identify uh, individual pathways. Mm -hmm. So, uh, especially in the uh, 2016 study, uh, you can follow uh, the number of individuals uh, having gone each one of 13 specified pathways through starting, switching, stopping. Yes. <laughs> and uh, that's uh, a unique characteristic of, of these studies of mine, which allows me to, to see exactly what has happened in under the one and the other condition. I think I, I read uh, in your 2016 study that 86 to 87 percent of Swedish men and women who uh, turned to snooze became former smokers who quit smoking for good. Is that correct? Yeah, and those who started smoking but did not uh, switch to or take up new shoes had a much lower stop smoking rate. Yes, yes. And uh, I also seem to remember that from your study, uh, those who went from smoking to snooze, that about one third of them later on stopped all nicotine use. Yes. Yes. So that must be a, a clear evidence that snooze is a good product for smoking, uh, for quit smoking and quit tobacco and nicotine altogether. Yes, I think uh, you are uh, bringing up an important point there by speaking of quitting nicotine altogether because one common uh, opinion is that if you switch from smoking to snooze, you are entering a lifelong nicotine dependence. People take that for, for granted. <laughs> yes. Uh, but as a matter of fact, my research shows that quite an important proportion of those who have gone from smoking to snooze will finally stop snooze use as well and become totally tobacco free. All right. And talking about nicotine, uh, there seems to be, in, in, uh, in, in, on many persons seems to believe that nicotine is what gives you sickness and death. What is your comment? No, there is no credible evidence to support uh, that belief. Yeah. The only 
thing that uh, deserves mentioning is maybe uh, the probable uh, negative effect of nicotine on pregnancies. Pregnant, pregnant women should not use any form of nicotine. No. Uh, no cigarettes, no snooze, no nicotine patches. No. No, uh, no e-cigarettes. No. If you are pregnant, no, no. yes. No, no nicotine at all. All right. So that is a very firm recommendation for pregnant women. Yeah. I, I had the uh, pleasure of meeting a friend and colleague of your, Dr. Professor Brad Rodo uh, yeah. of uh, USA, and he compared nicotine as a stimulant. He compared it to caffeine that you find in Coca-Cola, cigarettes, and whatever. Would you, uh, what is your opinion of, on that? Oh yes, speaking of the stimulant effect, I think well, that's a quite good comparison. And uh, tobacco in itself, if it is not uh, combusted, that you light it on fire and you inhale it. If, if I would uh, put a, a small piece of a cigarette under my lip, what... <laughs> Wouldn't that be much safer than to smoke it? Oh yes, of course, since the uh, hazardous thing for your health is when you inhale smoke, that is the combustion products. Yeah. So as soon as you get rid of combustion products, you are much safer. Mm -hmm. Th thank you very much. Um, let, let me... Uh, yes. Continue your tale on smoking cessation. Yes, please. The, the, we were just touching upon the evidence about people who switch from smoking to snooze uh, and already thereby stopping smoking and eventually even stopping uh, all tobacco. Yes. We have data of a uh, say, uh, different uh, character to illustrate on a more individual level the benefits of uh, uh, snooze as a cessation aid. Uh, one, uh, another one of my studies uh, were putting a question to all those who had declared that they had stopped smoking. The question read, what kind of cessation aid did you use at ah. your latest stop smoking uh, All right. uh, attempt? And uh, I have here a graph showing the outcome of, of those questions. Okay. And they, this figure show that among males, uh, SNIPS was by no competition the most commonly used cessation aid. And further, we uh, noticed that the success rate among those who use SNIPS was much higher than the success rate among those who used nicotine chewing gum. Or uh, I think that means that the SNIFS as a cessation aid has proven to be very efficient. I think the final outcome of uh, the use of a certain cessation aid uh, depends on two factors. Uh -huh. Both the success rate for the individual user and the number of those who actually use this aid. And I think these uh, research uh, results show that SNIVS is superior in both these respects. It's, can, it, can. It, is, it is more commonly used by more, more people and the success rate is higher than by other 
alternatives. I I have a question that uh, I, I I just thought about it right now. Uh, this uh, study you made in 2016. Can you tell the viewers how many years of data and how many people uh, have participated with their data each year, uh, approximately? Oh yes, the database well, that study uh, consists of data collected uh, in the period 2003 to 2011 including something like 66,000 people. Wow. So, so it's, not it, it's a quite large database uh, on which these yeah. data are based. The, the reason I ask this because um, it seems that some scientists, scientists uh, they make uh, a study with uh, a cohort, a group of persons of 20, 30 people, and then they draw the conclusions. What Dr. Lars Ramstrom here has done is involved data from 66,000 Swedish, I guess, of people living in Sweden during many, many years. Thank you. And uh, being selected by scientific methods to be in representative sample of the total Swedish population. Yeah. With, with a plus minus one percent uh, vari variation, uh, statistical variation perhaps. Oh yes, that were some uh, percentages uh, have a larger, some have a smaller. Uh, uh, but if you, if you look at the whole... Because of the size of the subgroup. Yeah. Yes, yes, of course. Um, why do you think tobacco control and even some governments put an equal sign between cigarettes and snooze use? Honestly, don't know. You might speculate. Maybe they find it uh, is comfortable it? and easy because then they don't have to bother about communicating <laughs> the differential. <laughs> yes. And or they could just focus on condemning tobacco. That is easier than yeah. making distinction between different things. But Isn't it so, Lars, that uh, speaking in any terms about the word tobacco and saying this or that is the same thing as speaking about food as if it was one product only. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, yes. Swedish meat or uh, uh, Irish cucumbers, whatever. You have to break it down. Oh, yes, yes. You, you can have a number of analogies. You can speak about the risk of going in the four-wheel vehicle varying from uh, <laughs> Uh, small uh, trucks uh, to uh, pencil wagons. Yeah, <laughs> and of uh, course, uh, or, or ordinary cars with or without safety belt. Or it so would it would probably be safer to to ride in a tank going to work than to ride in a a, a car from the 1960s. Yes. So you can't say. If I translate what you're saying, you can't group everything in one bag and say this is so, this is so. Well, there may be other factors playing a role. Uh, many uh, uh, politicians are eager to document that they have done something. Yeah. And then they find it easy to uh, bring up strong words about something that is simple. Yes. <laughs> and uh, focus on more or less uh, spectacular uh, legal prohibitions and whatever. But also, and maybe even more among certain tobacco control people, 
uh, you may have an ambition to uh, be looked upon as a strong warrior. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, a warrior needs an enemy. Mm -hmm. Yes. And these tobacco control warriors, they have an easy choice to find an enemy. Mm. That is the tobacco industry. Yeah. And then uh, some of them focus so much on just fighting tobacco industry and that doesn't leave uh, very ro much room for distinguishing between different tobacco industries. I, I think we have uh, people uh, saying that uh, like e-cigarettes is, is, should also be classified as tobacco which should be classified as smoking and <laughs> any comment oh, yeah. on that? Uh, <laughs> I think the e-cigarettes uh, have introduced a quite complicated terminological question about what is tobacco or not and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we could speak about that for hours. But I yeah, think now we concentrate <laughs> on, on snus now. Uh, but what I wanted to say that there are different products of harm reduction and, and snus is a uh, proven uh, working um, method uh, to, to help quit smoking and I guess uh, e-cigarettes is, is also that. Yes, uh, I think uh, we have a very authoritative statement made by uh, the Royal College of Physicians of London who in one of their recent, recent reports uh, noticed that the Swedish development towards Europe's lowest level of tobacco related mortality is a proof of concept that harm reduction works as works. switching yeah. to SNIFs has done in Sweden. Thank you. Um, besides yourself, which we look upon with the great respect Lars, uh, thank you for, for uh, meeting us here. Uh, could you mention some other persons in the world who, who, uh, who you look upon as influential um, scientists concerning uh, harm reduction? Oh yes. I uh, think, I, I would guess that you know many of them personally. Yes, I do. Would you care to mention some of them? <laughs> oh, you mentioned one yourself few minutes ago. Brad Rodel. Brad Rodel. Yeah. Uh, and while we are on the far side of the Atlantic, uh, I might like to mention uh, David Adams. David Adams. And uh, Lynn Kozlowski. Lynn Kozlowski. Kozlowski. And uh, if you cross the border to Canada, uh, David Sweener. David Sweener, yeah. Hey, there are many more, but uh, this kind of list should be... Short. And your colleague in Norway? Yeah, yeah, he, <laughs> he is indeed one of those who qualify uh, and plays on this list. And we have in... Dr. Carl Lund. Yes. You were thinking about, yeah at the Norwegian Institute for Public Health. Uh, and in the United Kingdom, you have uh, giants uh, like uh, Jerry Stimson and uh, uh, John Britton, who is the president of the Royal College of Physicians. Oh, all right, Committee. all right. Oh, I could mention even more, but uh, uh, we can <laughs> we can stop there. We from hashtag EU for Snus, we would like to thank both you and of course and these scientists uh, working with tobacco harm reduction in the world. Um, one odd question, perhaps: What's your opinion on newspaper reporters and tobacco control? cherry-picking uh, parts of 
parts of scientific studies that suits their interest, uh, often out of context and with headlines of uh, doom, destruction and uh, poison and whatever. <laughs> Uh, I think when you speak of journalists, uh, they are just exhibit exhibiting uh, bad judgment and cautionlessness. Or, or maybe being in a hurry, could that be part of the problem? Yeah, even more probable I think is that they are uh, seduced by uh, uh, anti-harm reduction activists. All right. I, we know that you support the EU Force News campaign. Um, and uh, we, we wonder, uh, could you tell us very shortly why you support an end of the snooze ban in the European Union? I think that's a matter of the possibility of saving lives in the European Union. I actually made a calculation a few years ago what would have happened in the European Union member states if instead of introducing the snooze ban in 1992 they had encouraged EU citizens to switch from smoking to snooze. So effectively encourage people so that they might have right now uh, been able to establish similar tobacco use patterns as Swedish men. All right, right. And so I just was uh, applying the Swedish age group specific uh, mortality rates yeah. to, to uh, the corresponding subgroups in various European countries. Uh, and the result came out that if uh, those conditions had been fulfilled since 1992. Yes. Okay. Uh, then we would have had a conceivable number of 355,000 fewer tobacco-related deaths among males in the European member states. Each year? Yes. Each year. So 1992 until 2016, or...? Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you, How many years is that? Oh, uh, yeah. oh, you should be careful not to make too exact calculations. This is oh, just right. meant to be an indication of the uh -huh. order of magnitude of the conceivable life-saving. Yes, yes. That's... I, I don't think there is a better argument uh, to allowing snooze than to save thousands of lives, uh, whether it's 50,000 or 500 or, or 355,000 doesn't really matter because each life, each person have a right to health and life. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, as Lars, as someone who have lived through the most remarkable events of the 20th century, and as someone of huge integrity and intellect, what has persuaded you to, uh, to work with harm reduction, uh, the harm reduction concept at, at your age? <laughs> I think it's just having at an early stage been aware of the life cost of smoking and then uh, gradually 
learning that there are effective ways of reducing uh, that burden. Yeah. Uh, yeah I uh, felt uh, quite a natural uh, reason to contribute to the best of my possibility That's uh, to, to achieve that kind of development. And, and uh, the world should thank Dr. Ramström for, for, uh, for his excellent work in this field. Um, here's a question I, I came up with uh, late. Uh, how do you feel about Sweden, Swedish government sort of denying uh, the miracle of snus? <laughs> I, oh, miracle. I mean, denying that uh, they are putting an equal sign when the, they have more tax on snus, I think, than on cigarettes in Sweden. Is it so? Yes, and particularly the most recent tax increases were uh, so much heavier on snus than on cigarettes. But that isn't very uh, easy explanation, namely, uh, they say that the <coughs> tax increase is the means of keeping down tobacco use, but the, the real fact is that they see it as a means of bringing, it, bringing in increased tax income, <laughs> and then uh, just uh, neglecting a the effects on health, which actually are negative under those conditions of relative yeah. tax hikes. Uh, but why they are putting that higher burden on SNPs is because if they are increasing cigarette taxes too much, there will be an impossible problem of illegal import. Ah, uh, black market. Huh? Yes. Uh, and a number of years ago, when they did make uh, a strong increase of cigarette taxes, the, uh, they just had to go back because the black market was too heavy. All right. While in the case of SNPs, there is no import, no illegal import of here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a safe income for the, yes. for the government. <laughs> Um, finally, my, fi my final question is, um, how do you feel about the World Health Organization um, uh, when it comes to harm reduction alternatives to smoking? The uh, golden WHO document, the Framework Convention, Tobacco control defines tobacco control uh, as a list of strategies to uh, reduce supply, demand, and to increase harm reduction. But in practical work, this third strategy is forgotten about. And what is the third strategy? Harm reduction. Yes, I, I knew the answer, but <laughs> for yeah. the viewers. And um, I think it has to do with that harm reduction means that you accept uh, benefits from products manufactured by certain tobacco companies. And there are too many people who put fighting that option at a higher priority than anything else. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Dr. Lors. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. And remember to support also hashtag EU for snooze. Thank you very much.